All right, welcome back everybody. And we are going right into coloring the eye that I left off on, at least the beginning of the eye, uh, the left eye or the right eye, if you want to get, you know, uh, particular about it. But anyway, and we're gonna hit A on our keyboard or click the direct selection tool. And then we are going to click I on the keyboard or hit the eyedropper tool. And when we hit control, we are bouncing back between the direct selection tool and the eyedropper tool. And that's gonna make us really easy to make this process quicker. And from that, we are going to just get into it. So let's start from the top right here. So it looks like I'm running into a little color issue with those harsh lines. So I'm actually going to have to break them off a little bit or else this isn't really going to work. It's kind of obvious um, where the correction needs to be the color correction based on the selection of pixel color that you've chosen. All right, so pretty much there's the eye before we start making any type of blending corrections to it. I do have to just color this one part of the eye. Forgot about this part right here. And you can see what we did with that. Um, that crevice of the eye up there and you can see how it looks smooth but it also is there and it's very subtle but also it kind of looks you know it looks very real I think um, bes again besides all the color mistakes that we have here but it's looking pretty good I'd say in general I'd say without any blending you know not too bad definitely needs some work though all right, so we're going to get right into, let me just fill in this, this color, actually. It's really just bothering me that it's white. All right, so now you can see we're getting closer. Definitely looking very unique. All right, so if you didn't see the rest of my videos, what we're going to do now is we are going to start doing the back and forth blending technique of the color. And we're also gonna, actually before we do that, we're gonna fix these points that are creating these harsh lines. Cause this is uh, creating a problem visually. We're gonna make sure our Bezier curves are not overlapping when we move these. 
got to stay aware of where our curves are, it will definitely fix the smoothening of the shapes. All right, so we cleared up that little choke hold. Let's keep going and clearing up the rest. I think I need one more point up in here just to give it a little bit more of a color divide. I don't have enough color change between this point and this point. So I think by adding another point in between here will help me out. On just a quick notice, I noticed that these are not really straight. Just gonna fix that. It's very small, you won't really see it, but I just have a bunch of OCD when it comes to this stuff. Uh, might as well just clean it up. So I'm just gonna quickly do my left and right technique because I'm impatient right here and it needs it. So I'm gonna take this point to the left and I'm gonna just select the color to the left of it with the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna select the point, select the color next to it, select the point, select the color next to it, to the left, all the way across the line. And then we're gonna to go to basically wherever you feel like the end point is and where you need to blend. Once we do it all the way to the you know left of the point, left of the point, we're gonna go back from the end and we're gonna go right of the point. So we selected that point, we're gonna go right of the point. Selected that one, go to the right, go to the right. And we keep doing this over and over again. And now we're gonna go left, maybe left bottom. We're gonna keep doing this until we have one general trend of color and it looks more solidified. Definitely better than before. Same over here, let's do it over here. What this technique is basically doing is spreading each tone across every pixel, um, not every pixel, every anchor point. So you're getting a more consistent color change. And we do want it to be kind of uh, sporadic with these pinks and magentas and these reds and these oranges because she has makeup on that is like that. And we want to kind of portray that in a smooth formation. You know, we don't want to draw all that makeup we don't really want, I mean, unless you want to, I don't really want to draw all that makeup grit that we see from the close-up photography. I'm simply trying to draw a realistic rendition of that face. There really is no right or wrong way to do this. You are simply just trying to sample colors around it to again, give it more general um, change, smoother change between the tones that we have selected from our previous color stage or the initial stage. I'm not going to worry about the edges too much because I know I'm going to be playing around with the opacity and playing around with the blending of the other layer. So the colors most likely are going to get changed anyway. I don't want to go crazy on that if I know that. I'm just going to spend my time fixing what needs to be fixed. I don't really like what's going on over here with this line. So we're going to have to get rid of this. looking much better. I'm gonna smoothen out this left to right. The key to being successful, the key to being successful with this blending technique, left to right, up, down, you know, this uh, continuous color matching is that you want to be able to visualize what you need to be doing. So like you see this harsh line here or this, you know, it's not necessarily harsh, but you can see almost a, a giant line from here to here, light tan to dark tan, right? So you have to understand to fix that, you need to go left to right, 
we can't go up and down to fix that. That's not going to do anything. That's only going to enhance that line. We need to go against the grain. So the key to fixing and blending is going against the grain. So to fix this line, if I really wanted to, even though I know there's a decent color change there, it's still a little too harsh. So I would go against the grain. I go up and down, up and down. Maybe I need to add new points, who knows? But on that note, we're just gonna keep continuing and you can watch me blend. I think I need to add a point right in the middle of here. I think I'm losing, um, I don't like how the color is moving between the, that pocket. So I'm just going to add some color in here and then start doing more blending. I think I just need one point right here. See, I even think that alone just gave me the satisfaction I was looking for. Just was giving me a weird color change there based on the geometry. I think I just need to add one point here. Again, I'm not really liking how the blending is working out right above these points in the crevice of the eye socket. Just too much color drag.
So I do have to make another point over here. And I'm probably going to have to make another point right over here. But let me see first before I even get ahead of myself. Let me fix what I made. All right, so if you ask me, I think that this display, for now, you know, for now, I, I mean, I don't know what it will look like when everything is done. Same thing with the face, but I think for now, that is a very good resemblance of what we needed to get out of the eye layer, at least eye layer three. I'm gonna name it to eye layer two for now. I think I'm just gonna do two layers, just that one that I just did and then the one to finish it up. Um, but I guess we'll just play it by ear again. Um, on the next episode, I'm going to end it here, but on the next episode, I'm going to work on blending this eye layer to the actual face layer, um, the face background, and then we're going to really see how it kind of ties itself together. Um, and we're going to do corrections to the face layer and the eye layer around the edges and around the, um, on the face layer around the border of the eye layer. But for now, again, thank you for watching. My name is Mark Dematti. You can follow me at Marked Arts on Instagram. That's M-A-R-K-D underscore A-R-T-S. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I work really hard on these videos. If you like them, please like. If not, please let me know why in the comments. Or just let me know why in the comments um, why you like the video. Or just anything in general. Please interact with me. I am a human. I am making these videos for you. On that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.